firewood. Firewood, firewood, firewood. When you're living alone in a cabin in the woods in the Pacific Northwest in the middle of winter, firewood is an essential tool for comfort and coziness. My name is Diego, and in this episode of Diego Tries Hard, I will be sharing footage of me gathering firewood over the course of three different days. I think it was three, maybe it was four, I don't know. A lot of different days <laughs> I went out and gathered firewood for my cabin. I did some of it by myself, and I did some of it with neighbor Al, and I did some of it with neighbor Paul. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. I hope you enjoy. I have used up just about all the stash that I keep on my porch here. This and that is all that remains from the wood that I gathered last summer when I got it off the side of the road. Oh yeah. And I still haven't been able to find the time or money to build a woodshed out here in front of the cabin. Building a woodshed so I don't have to keep stacking it on the porch is definitely on my to-do list, but I still haven't gotten to it yet. So the wood that I get today is gonna go on the porch here for the time being, cause that's what I've got to work with. And it looks like my final batteries have finished charging. So I am ready to go. I got my chainsaw all set up here to sharpen it, but then I realized I didn't have the right file. This is too big, so I can't sharpen my chainsaw. Last time I used the chainsaw, it was cutting okay, so I think I'll be fine using it today, but it would be optimal to start off with a sharpened chainsaw, but I'm just gonna have to work with what I've got because I'm definitely not driving all the way to the store just to get the right size file. It would be one thing if it was really, really dull, but it should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the truck with all the tools that I'm gonna the need for today and then I'm gonna shut things down here at the cabin lock it up and hit the road that I get all the time about me putting firewood on the front porch is about bugs. People are concerned like, hey, aren't bugs gonna get into that wood and then get into the walls of the cabin and ruin the cabin? Like that's why you shouldn't put wood on the porch because of insect problems, termites, all that kind of, kind of stuff. And I've been doing this for a couple of years now, putting wood on the porch and I've never seen any bugs, never seen any bug damage. So I've either gotten lucky or bugs aren't much of an issue in this area or at my cabin specifically I don't know but I uh, haven't had much of a problem with the bugs In the video I made about returning to the cabin, I drove by this spot right here and I showed how all these trees fell down right over the highway and this was blocked off for a while. And all these trees are still here. So I bet there are several loads of firewood sitting right here. So I'm gonna get to work and uh, the sun's out right here. So it's pretty warm. I actually don't need this hat. Man, I might not even need this hoodie today. All right, let's get to work. I just took the limbs off of that one. And it's the one that's hanging over the road the most. So I think I'll leave that one as the last one I'm gonna cut. And it'll act like my flaggers sticking out into the middle of the road, letting people know like, hey, there's work going on here. <laughs> 
so people who are coming from that direction they can see it so they won't run into me plus these trees have been down here for a long time and this road is driven on by people who come up here all the time for the most part i think so everybody knows this is here so they know to avoid it and you can see it from both directions in the distance so i'm not too worried about somebody running into me in this situation <laughs> batteries so people are constantly giving me crap about having an electric chainsaw and i've mentioned this before but i'll mention it again i already had a bunch of makita power tools i have a circular saw i have an impact driver i have a drill what else do i have, I have a grinder i think i have something else like a flashlight i have all these makita power tools that are powered by these same batteries so i already had at least six batteries and then this chainsaw came with two i believe or maybe i bought two more i don't know but people are like man those batteries are so expensive you bought that chainsaw blah 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 like gas chainsaws are so much better like i know i know certain applications well some would argue all applications gas chainsaws are better and i'm not even going to try and argue with you okay gas chainsaws are awesome they have a lot of things that they're better for but the first time I ever used a battery powered chainsaw it was an ego brand and it was awesome and it was like quiet and it was lightweight compared to what I'm used to and I was like I'm definitely getting a battery powered chainsaw when I when I buy one for myself so that's what I did and like I said I already had all these batteries so it just made sense for me all right pair of freshies still plenty of barn chain oil and we're back in business All right, check it out. So I did some damage here, got lots of rounds, and I've used up all my batteries, so I'm waiting for them to charge. So while I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and split some of these rounds and throw them in the back of the truck. I'm gonna do all my splitting here instead of throwing the rounds in the truck and bringing them up to the cabin. That way, once I arrive at the cabin, all I have to do is stack the wood. That's all I gotta do. So most of the work is gonna be done here. started by just throwing this stuff in here randomly but now I got a good layer in here so moving it around so I can maximize the amount of wood I can fit in one load all 
All right, those are finally done. So I got the chain stuck like an idiot. <laughs> and I tried first to use leverage and I stuck a log under there and that little fulcrum point, a pivot point, tried to use my body weight to get it out of there but that hasn't worked so I'm gonna try and chip away at this log with an ax, see if that will work. Stretch that bad boy out. Oh, okay. Who knows if I'll be able to salvage this chain. Let's see. That took a very, very long time, <laughs> but I'm back in business. I'm trying to get this piece right here, but it's coming off of that log. We got all this stuff stacked on top of each other. Right there is where I got stuck, and it's because it's pinching right there, pinching. Check it out everyone. Got a solid load of firewood there. And this is the aftermath. I'm gonna cut that one off and maybe fit it in the back of the truck. But since I'm here, I think I'll go ahead and cut these ones off and then push them out of the way. Clear as much as the road as I can. This one's just too big, way too big for my chainsaw. Well, maybe I can cut those, but I can't get them in the truck right now. So that one's got too much weight on it. I'm too scared to cut that one. Uh. I don't know, maybe. I'm gonna start cutting, we'll see what happens.
All right, everybody, made it back here to the cabin and it's nice and dark now, but that's because as soon as I got here, I went inside the cabin and sat on the toilet for about 30 minutes, took care of some much needed business. But now I'm back outside and I got my truckload of firewood here. I got this super dry stuff that I threw off the porch before I went out there. And with this stuff, I'm gonna split it into real small pieces for kindling. So I'm gonna fill this box right here with kindling and then on that side of the box and that side of the box, that's where the truckload of firewood will go. And shout out to my grandma, SH. She uh, made that for me when she was up here for the 4th of July. So I still have that grandma and it's here to stay. All right, everyone, so an extremely impromptu adventure is about to take place. I just talked to my friend Paul. He has a place near my cabin, and he said there's a downed tree that he just found out about, and he's like, hey, I'm about to go discover this thing <laughs> or see where it's at and get some firewood. You want to come with me? And I was like, okay, <laughs> might as well. So I threw the chainsaw in the truck here and I got all my batteries. Luckily, I charged them all since I cut that firewood off the side of the road. So right now I'm following Paul out to this spot where apparently there's a tree down. And he also said, before we go to that spot, he said there's a another down tree somewhere else that he's known about for a while and he's like dude let me show you this one because i know you need more firewood and you're gonna get all the firewood you're gonna need for a long time from this one spot so that's where we're headed to right now and unfortunately i have a bunch of random old lumber in the back of my truck right now so the truck bed's not empty but uh, i'll talk about that later all right looks like we made it all right man so is this the first one you were telling me about this isn't the cedar this isn't the cedar okay this is an ash ash believe. tree okay right on we got stuck here and i realized there's a lot of wood <laughs> we can get enough to fill our trucks up and then oh yeah right on. i got access to a huge saw if you just want to come back and just holy crap zip away on this thing oh my gosh <laughs> yeah my saw is definitely not big enough <laughs> to handle that one <laughs> check it out that's where it broke off right there geez yep yeah, that happened with the ice one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Holy cow. Look at it over there. Yeah, that's a big one. So you have a bigger saw than that one too? Yeah. Okay. I got a big access to a big husky. My neighbor has it. Oh, she okay. said, I don't, I don't even know how to use a saw. She's like 80 years old. Oh, so. <laughs> This is great, man. Thanks for mm -hmm. taking me out here. Dead ones. Jeez. This stuff definitely feels pitchy to me, or sappy. How it depends on where you're from. People call it different stuff. Sap, pitch, whatever. I can feel the chainsaw kind of fighting it. It's like sticking, but it's doing its job. Oh, this is ash? What's the... We're going to the cedar tree next. Oh, that's right. I guess we said that at the beginning, but I forgot. You think this makes for good kindling? This stuff or no? I've been using it as long as you get it small enough. Okay. I use the small kindling, the um, cedar first. Yeah. And then I stack medium size this on top, and then my logs go on top of it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, I have no interest in getting stuck today, so I'm gonna be very careful. I've got the snatch strap in. and then I'll get out of your way. <laughs> kind of blocks off this whole area. <laughs> Alright, so have you, you said you've done this hike. Have you been to that bolt camp shelter? This long length of stuff that looks similar to this. It's really so, cool. Uh, a bit of bush, bush camp shelter? I'm in the middle area so I don't get a lot of them. I'm getting uh, raccoons right oh, now. Man. Yeah, I've, I've never had the raccoon issue. But they tried breaking in my truck. Oh, geez. It's always like a last minute decision, you know? Sped up or is it going to be like boom, 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 like cut? It's it's all kind of in the moment. You speed it up. What does it sound like? So, yeah. You got a fisker? No point. Uh, I don't know what I have. All right, Paul just got turned around much quicker than I did. His truck is nicer than mine. <laughs> but uh, all right, we're loaded up. We're going to head back to the cabin, unload this, and then go to the first spot, which is now my second spot. That's all good. That's all scrap lumber. I wasn't even planning on doing this this morning. Paul but just, the snow made you, huh? Well, Paul just stopped by. He's like, hey, I'm going to go do this. Do you want to join in? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. I'll fit what I can in there. <laughs> but any physics. Oh. Yep. Like even the, I had a friend who was a math major. Mm -hmm. And he took differential equations at the same time as me. Mm -hmm. And we like looked at our homework and it was books. Different. And it was different. Yeah. Derivatives. Well, because it's more applied to business. Yeah. But you've done a lot of electricity. Yeah. So the water is polar, right? It's got a positive end and a negative end. Static, you get electricity. Anytime you move magnets, you get electricity. Okay, so that's the load that I just got with Paul, and we're gonna go out and get another one. Made it to the second spot here. Now I see what you were talking about. <laughs> it's a lot of wood there, big wood. You guys drag some from yeah, out of there? Yeah, tied ropes onto it, or straps onto it, pulled it out. Oh, nice. So I saw this piece over here. I think you could probably look, look the shot on that. Oh, yeah. Yep. I pulled that out of the road. It's a good one for me. <laughs> yep, yep. Right on. We don't have to go too crazy. I think you're allowed 10 feet off the, off the road. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's obviously helping the forest out to clean it up yeah that's what I figured yeah it smells so amazing out here oh my gosh <laughs> you want to start on this one uh sure yeah I'm uh gonna check my yep, yep. oil here <laughs> oh jeez all the sap collects at the bottom nice <laughs> You got time today. I gotta get back to town today. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, though. Yeah, yeah. No problem. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Look at the little echo go. Oh. <laughs> grab that one down there. I'll yeah. grab another one of these. See what I'm talking about there? This one right here? Okay, yeah. I think that's a good one for you. Yeah. to be 
careful because you're, you're got the pavement underneath yeah. you too. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so if Paul proved anything with his echo saw, it's not about the length of the bar, gentlemen. It got the job done. Oh, geez. Women call it cute. <laughs> yeah. You can do a lot with a little. <laughs> Just remember that. <laughs> Don't let any of the ladies tell you different. I don't even want to know what that is. Oh, yeah. That looks like... It does, doesn't it? Uh, horse. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a long way up here. One, two, three. Cleaned up. Clean my house and go back to town and make some more money. Made it back here to the cabin with this load of firewood and I went inside and had a meeting with the toilet. Learned a lot, had a couple breakthroughs and then I was hungry. So is it just me or are Nature Valley bars always the right answer? Also did a slight wardrobe change. Those boots were getting really hot and I am going to split and stack the rest of this and then I have more to do after that. Ugh. Back here behind the garage where all the exhaust and stuff for the generator box is. Right next to that, I've had a pile of lumber here under a tarp for a long time. And what remains under the tarp back there is good stuff like four by fours, four by sixes, stuff that I wanna keep and possibly utilize to build my woodshed. But the rest of it is all right here. And that's leftovers from all the scrap wood, the free scrap lumber that I used to sheet the inside of the garage here. Some of you may remember that project. That is all going to the dump tomorrow. But then this stuff, like these old deck boards and a lot of this scrap, I'm just gonna cut it into short pieces that will fit inside my wood stove and I'm gonna use it as firewood and burn all of it. Because I've had it for years at this point and it still hasn't been used and it's just sitting back there underneath a the tarp 
and I keep thinking to myself like maybe I can use it someday and then I just never do so it's time to let it go throw the stuff away that I really am not going to use and then it's kind of sad to take two by sixes like that that could be used but I just again I don't want to be a hoarder I'm trying to get rid of stuff so I'm gonna burn it so I almost didn't cut these two by sixes. It was really painful when I made the first cut. I was like, man, I could definitely use these for something, right? <laughs> Framing something. And then I measured them again and they're less than eight feet, but they're a little bit longer than seven feet. So I'm like, ah, it's gonna be kind of, you know, you can't frame a wall, can't really frame a floor. I mean, you could, but it would be too small for a sheet of, you know, sheets come in eight foot so i was like you know what i just i gotta part ways they gotta go they gotta go <laughs> but they could be used for blocking or something like that i don't know i don't know but i'm always doing like a cost benefit analysis and i will be using these as firewood and firewood does cost money so this is less firewood that i have to go out and purchase or go out and split in the woods like i just did so i am using it it's not you know it's not like i'm just throwing them away I am using them to burn and heat the cabin so it's all good these are the original deck boards from this deck right here they're not treated lumber by the way and when I cut through them they don't appear to be treated with anything like nobody ever put a sealer on them or anything so it's just straight up wood you know you're getting old when you've had old lumber underneath a tarp outside for multiple years and you finally come to the point where you need to get rid of it and it's still a painful experience where you're like ah oh, i can't let it go it's gonna be good for something that means i'm definitely getting old <laughs> should cut a lot better. I'm excited to try this now. <laughs> oh yeah, baby.
so I just made it to Al's and we're headed up the hill to where he's gonna show me a spot where he's got some wood for me and then you said the stuff you want to get is further up yeah. yeah this is the hill that Al drove his truck up in the snow <laughs> in <laughs> one of those videos and almost made it you were like right there real close <laughs> all right so Al's gonna try and make it back up the hill that we came down it's not plowed so we'll see how it goes he's coming in hot <laughs> second gear yeah buddy <laughs> Go, 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 go! Come on, baby! Oh! Oh, man! <laughs> so close! There's the truck. I don't think the weather gets any better than this. No. <laughs> it's just perfect. I don't think I'm going to end up working in a t shirt. Yeah, head. yeah, yeah. I don't think <laughs> this is going to last long. This is a good sunny spot, too. So I've never been past this shed. I don't think I've been down here before. Uh -huh. My first time. This is the first one. Oh, so we're gonna cut some down, huh? Yeah, it'll be drier. Nice. <laughs> I feel like dry stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this was still green or not, but I didn't hear the bark peel off, so it should be fairly dry inside. Okay. And it should go right over there. <coughs> right across the driveway there. So. Real easy to get to. Oh, right here. That one there. Oh, that short one there. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. And if that's not enough, we can find some more. Okay. <laughs> So Al's gonna head to his spot, which is further up the road. Uh-oh. If, if his truck will start, that was weird. What was that sound? Oh, contact. Yeah, hopefully it's just the contacts. He's got it. There's my wedge that I cut out first and then it fell just like you saw and of course it got wedged between those ones up there. Let's see what I can do. I can hear Al's chainsaw running in the distance and he just fell a tree. I want to go over there and oh, I just shut it off. Maybe I'll go over there now. I don't want to get a tree falling on top of me though. <laughs> Did you say am I ready? I said done already. Oh no. <laughs> nope, just fell the tree. I heard a big crash. It was a... oh yeah, it was pretty soft, I thought. <laughs> so your saws Working well on that? Oh, well, it just started whoop, right up. First pull? <laughs> well, second. <laughs> yeah, Al's got a new chainsaw. Is it Echo? Yeah, I had an Echo before. Okay. Years ago. It was a big one, 32 inch, I think. Yeah. That I took and trade for a go kart. Oh. And I really liked it. I forget what went wrong with it. I think it was just old. Okay. All right, well, I'll get out of your hair. I'm going to go yeah. chop that one up. I just <laughs> wanted to see what you were doing. I was going to cut this one here, but it's still green. 
Okay. Man, you got a lot of <laughs> woods around here. <laughs> I see another one over here. One tree down. And there's Al. I think he drug over a log with him. Oh man. It's getting hung up. Well that's a pretty big one. Wouldn't come out. Yeah, that's the one that's over. <laughs> oh, did you just take the chain off just now? Yeah. Okay. Looks like some good stuff. I tried to pull it up with, a, with another limb sticking out here. Oh. Uh, so of course that got hung up in, behind the tree. <laughs> I had to cut it off. And then with this little part, it wouldn't go past the tree. <laughs> and I had to pry it over. <laughs> That's after four or five tries trying to pull it up out of that ditch. <laughs> 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 All those rounds right there are from that first tree. Now I'm gonna go cut the second one. But first, I'm gonna move the truck out of the way so I don't fall this tree on the truck. So I'm a little short of a full, full truckload, but I'm gonna call that good. The other tree that Al pointed out it would probably get me to too much. So I'll leave that for another trip here. I'm happy with what I got, especially considering I wasn't even planning on coming here today, so.
Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Those are nice looking rounds there. Sure yeah. a lot prettier than the last time I was over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're kind of half dry. You get enough? Yeah, I got a solid load. Not quite heaping full. I There's still that half one there. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about it. That would probably be more than I could get, so okay. I just figured I'd call it good. <laughs> There's a lot of small dead stuff around too if you need okay. kindling or whatever. Yeah, I might come back again next time there's Anytime. a good day. <laughs> yeah, hopefully next time it'll be dry enough to get up the hill. Yeah, there's a lot I up there. I could get a load of logs and then I could drag down a couple of big ones for you. Okay. And whatever works. Let me know when you're doing that. I can try and help you out. Sometime after we've had two days of a dry east wind. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's going to be a while. Looks like we got tomorrow and, <clears throat> and then at least a week of wet, mm. cold. Okay. Snow. Oh, I <laughs> thought we were done with that for this year. No, one more. <laughs> I don't think we'll get much snow here, but you might get some up where you are. Yeah. A little bit higher. We say down to a thousand feet or so. So that creek that's running over there, that's the one that feeds your pond, right? Yeah. Okay. A few years ago, the beavers had dams all along here. Really? There wasn't, I don't think there was any running water. Just after another. Wow. And they've been back around the last few weeks. We're working on that one just below the house. There. Okay. Wow, that's all beavers? This is all beavers. Too. That's crazy. Yeah. I think it used to go further around. Than the, oh, it grew back or something. So this yeah, is a... They made a yeah, yeah, I don't know how it still lived. Hemlock? <laughs> Hemlock, yeah. Yeah, that's a big tree there. In the corner of my property is down there underwater somewhere right in that area. Okay. There's a stake down there somewhere, iron post. And then my property goes up on the line where it's cut. And that way. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to think more like an NBA draft guy. I'm like, you kind of need to be 5'10". Finally made it back here to the cabin. Don't know how well you can see that, but we got a full moon tonight shining through the trees here. I don't think it's showing up very well on the camera, but looks cool for me. So my fire did not last. I turned it down way too low. Good morning everyone made it back to the cabin here it's the next morning and i just had some breakfast pretty simple just some eggs and some sausage and some spinach and just had a nice chill morning stoked the fire filled my belly feeling pretty good but also feeling really tired but despite the fact that i'm feeling tired i am gonna split this wood that i got from al's yesterday and it looks like it's gonna be another really nice day and after this we're gonna have like a week of rain and cold so i really feel like i need to take the opportunity on this dry day to go out and get some more wood 
So I think I'm gonna do that despite the fact that I'm like so tired. I'm gonna go get one more load, one more truck load. I'm charging the batteries right now, but I do have plans to do some chilling this evening. So I will relax. I will reward myself later on. But first I gotta put in that work. All right, everybody, another successful load of firewood. Time to head back to the cabin. All right, everyone, mission accomplished. I gathered my firewood and now I am relaxing here in the upstairs of the cabin right above the wood stove where I got a good fire burning and it's nice and cozy and warm up here and that was the goal and I achieved it. So <laughs> it's been about a week since the last day that I recorded me gathering that firewood and in that time we've had some more winter weather <laughs> as Al predicted. We got crazy rain and then we got lots of snow. Well not a lot of snow but more snow, I guess you could say. And with all that weather came nothing but moisture falling out of the sky, whether it be rain or snow, and really, really cold conditions. So I'm very glad that I took advantage of those sunny days that I had and gathered all that firewood because I have used a lot of it in that time. I had quite a bit of wood and now it's depleted quite a bit. So I've just been taking it off the porch. I haven't gotten into the piles under the tarp yet and hopefully i won't have to for a while because that stuff is still pretty wet but worst case scenario i can use that method of bringing the wood in here and drying it out next to the wood stove that seems to be working pretty well now to conclude this video part of me has so much i would like to say when i edit my videos obviously i watched it back from beginning to end before I create the video to do a final check and there's so many things where i want to stop and be like hey everybody this is what I was thinking uh, just so you know like <laughs> and I do that a lot and there's always gonna be something that people would do differently or people have an opinion on and I want to be like hey I this is this is why I'm doing this but there's so many of those things in this video that have to do with safety that have to do with technique it's just like it's not worth my time <laughs> so it is what it is that that's me gathering firewood uh, probably different than what you would do, but that's how I'm doing it right now. And it's probably different from how I will do it several years down the road, but I'm still relatively young in this game of living full time out here in the woods. So I don't know everything and I'm learning a lot of things. Everything that I do, I learn something. So I'm a work in progress, that's for sure. A few weeks ago in one of my videos, I talked about practicing patience and not being in a hurry. That's one of the things that I learned during the filming of that video. 
And I would have to say what I learned during the filming of this video, something I want to work on, practice, is gratitude and appreciation for the things that I have. I say that because I don't yet have a woodshed or a way to store a mass amount of wood and keep it dry and season it and go through this cycle. And I don't have a hydraulic wood splitter. I'm having to split everything by hand, which I enjoy. Actually, <laughs> a lot of people are like, you're crazy for splitting all your stuff. But Al is a huge inspiration for me wanting to continue to do that because as you know, he's awesome and he's in his, he's 83 and uh, he's still splitting and stacking his own wood. And hey, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's probably one of the things that has helped him live a long and healthy life is uh, doing those types of things. So that inspires me to want to keep doing that. But I just want to be grateful for what I have. Not everything that I have is perfect. Uh, stacking your wood on the porch is not ideal because of many of the reasons that you guys are probably thinking of, but hey, I don't have a woodshed yet, so that's what I got to do, and it's working, you know, going out and getting the wood the way that I'm doing it. It's probably not ideal. There's better ways to do it. I have firewood to put in the stove to keep me warm. I'm in this cabin. I'm warm. I'm comfortable, and all is well. No, I don't have my woodshed yet, but I just put a tarp over all that wood that I gathered, and it's keeping it drier than it would be if I didn't have the tarp. <laughs> so, you know, it's all good, man. It's all good for me. I have so few things to complain about and uh, I am so, so grateful for all the things that I have. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you on the next one.